uh, remotely well in the last map, and why not go to that again? There's going to be Atlanta here on this first defense, running the 3-3, Gator on the Rhine. NRG just going to get that scout. You see stand one on the Sombra. We see this for the heroes that, you know, don't know exactly which hero they might play on the offense. They send someone like the flex support or the rain tank. So stand one just looking for the scout on the Sombra. Going to be going back to the spawn and swapping now onto the Rhine. So NRG just saying, you know what, we're going to run 3-3 versus your 3-3. And I mean, it's also not to say that NRG has looked bad on in the mirror. I mean, against other teams, NRG usually welcomes this. I think Atlanta, a bit stronger in 3-3 than the average opponent NRG has been up against. And NRG, they don't make the classic, most of the time, a mistake of going space. Instead, they're going to be staying ground floor. I'm also surprised that Atlanta did not try to make that drop. You see a lot of teams drop from the high ground when, when, the, off, when the offense is rotating lower. They try to get that early damage, try to catch the back line from that rotation. They're still holding on to the high ground right now. And NRG taking the very weird way of wrapping around to the high ground. It's not very orthodox. Usually if you get that far in, you just go to point. A lot of shield pressure moving in the stand one here as well, where they're going to bury him, they're going to let him move forward. But he's not going to be able to shield and really get away here effectively. And he just gets booped off. So now the rest NRG of Atlanta, the they can take the initiative here. They can dive in the NRG, but they're just holding back. I'm very surprised that Atlanta did not take the initiation there while Sam was on the low ground. As we oh. that Gator's down and the Shatter's out. Yeah, as soon as Gator goes down, Stan 1 drops the Shatter, realizes that's a fantastic opportunity, takes Hawk for a ride the other way. The front line completely decimated here for Atlanta in short order. And now they're going to use the grab to make the rest of it very, very clean. Kevster builds it up early. And RG going to take point A. And I really don't think that grab was necessary, ZP. No. I, I mean, Gator was down. There was no transcendence on the field. They also had Hawk, who was split from the team from charge of stand one, so they can't snowball this. Though, uh, though I guess I don't think NRG, been you, didn't able expect, anyway. you didn't expect a snowball anyways, so why not use the grab to clean it up? And Kevster has been building grabs quick enough that I almost kind of want to give him a Defran pass there and say, I don't think that was the most ideal use of grab, but I understand. A really smart rotation for NRG there. You see they fake main and then come back onto the high ground to force Atlanta to swap. Ooh. But while we say that, Mirror was actually in main, still there, and Atlanta engages on. That was a really nice rotation for Atlanta. Stan 1, though, trying to make the most of it, dropping the Shatter the other way. Graviton, though, in from Atlanta, gonna prevent a lot of the follow through. And Atlanta, I think, is totally okay with how this fight has broken down. NRG gonna be getting pushed out, but on the same note, look at Kevster. Grab grab for the next fight. Yeah, yeah, the Defran pass may be very valuable here since Kevster will have the grab. No grab now for Atlantis, and we see a lot of the times where if you don't have a support ult, you'll use your own grab to sort of peel for your team to prevent the cleanup. But Saucy does not have that available. So energy moving in here. We'll have combo. Have no other ults under the belt at all. Kevster usually doesn't wait. He's going to immediately grab, and there could be a window here. Bird does have transcend transcendence yet. They can move in. The bomb up over the top. They've already got one, and Smex gets two more. What a fall through. Moving in from NRG. Now, being down Byram does hurt, but as long as you have five, you can still move in here and get this point. Atlanta suffered way more damage. The bomb only feeds Kevster even more. And NRG could be saying a quick time here indeed. There's Bird having to use that trance to touch. Gets booped off almost the C9, but not quite. Mirror's Rally keeping everyone up right now. Gator onto the... Oh! Okay. Well. Well, that, it was well, that loop around there that uh, he was off the point just long enough. Also, something that we have neglected to talk about here is that Ajax is back in the lineup right now. When we're on, on Bro Assault, there's no funny Astro. But definitely, I, I was talking about how, you know, don't forget to touch, and they forget to touch. They are, they are or at least unable to. So, take a look at this. Uh, not a bad attack for energy, I have to say. I mean, that's a fast time. Not the fastest I've ever seen on Horizon Little Colony, but still a fast enough time that we, if you're NRG, you can feel confident moving in forward into your defense. And, uh, you know, you take a look at NRG as they get the set up here. You know, we talked about Kevster and his grab discipline, and I, I think you do have to give him the Defran pass here. <laughs> as far as it goes, where, again, I'm not going to say that every grab he throws out is perfect, but the fact that he not only builds grab quickly, but also goes to throw out the grab as soon as possible worked out really well for NRG because that fight is very different if they wait even about three to four more seconds because Bird was close to getting transcendence in the middle of that fight but that 10% was all the difference needed from Kevster because he gets a grab right before and they lose people before Bird can transcend so instead of being a fight winning transcendence it's a 
Oh, I'm just heading back out to point, trying to delay Transcend. You see Gator throwing some sprays here onto the wall. Atlanta getting ready to roll out for their offense. Are they going to be running sugar free on this? Ana, the triple support, but with no Brigida, rather. No, it is going to be back on the Brigida. I don't think it's impossible. We've seen sugar free play the Ana here before for Atlanta. Now they're stacking up here on the lower left. They're noticing where energy's at. They're making this rotation here to the right flank. Looking to get in. And Atlanta, I don't expect them to go space. They might bluff it here, but Atlanta more on the realm of just go. Well, they're getting pushed into space to a degree here. Heavy pressure moving in, but they just counter push back in. They get down the Brigida early. Atlanta now 6v5, and this is casually now. Walk over to the point, knowing that they have a huge advantage in power. We've seen Atlanta do that a lot where they fake to go lower, and as soon as the enemy team draws some high ground, they speed away. So now they get that pick onto Beer, they're controlling point, a lot of ticks already. Stam1 tries to move in and just gets stunned, isolated, and down. And the scary thing here, the stagger on the Pooks is gonna be really bad for NRG. They're down players in Atlanta. They're going to run as fast as possible to get directly on the point B. Gator just turning on the juice, moving on in. And now Atlanta already on the point. And now it's not even just about the stagger and the point presence, but Bird about to have to send it. Saucy ahead in the grab here as well. Atlanta hanging on here to the point. NRG trying to fight back over. They're gonna lose Stam 1. It opens up Gator for the Shatter. Iris. Gonna be forced to have the Transcendence here from Byron, but NRG in a very tough spot right now. Bird, his Transcendence still in reserve. If Kevster even got the grab up mid-fight, still a little bit away from that. Two ticks already to Atlanta. NRG going to have to commit soon. The Graviton out. Mirror in a heap of trouble. Gonna be falling as well. Atlanta just finishing out here. It's a decent shatter in from stand one, but the fall through not gonna be there. The beat and transcendence, they're layered together, but in this case, I don't necessarily hate it. I don't hate it. It keeps everyone from Atlanta alive. As we're talking, Gator is coming up with another shatter. Doesn't get it in time, and that's Atlanta finishing the cap off the snowball. The snowball there is so good for Atlanta. Their ult economy is so good. You see before they invest the grab, before they solo grab mirror, they make sure to pressure specs out of the mech. And that's a much quicker time for Atlanta. Yeah, and uh, Atlanta, I, I would say that, yes, they had the presence of mind to quickly run to the point after point B, but NRG needed to give up point A earlier. I don't think there's any reason for them to be staggering as long as they were. Any benefit of the delay they got there was going to be heavily counterbalanced by the fact that they weren't going to be out of spawn by the time Atlanta was knocking on their door. And it made things difficult because if they had slightly better positioning, that probably would have been enough for Kevster to build up a grav before Atlanta was able to decisively engage. I think also what it comes down to is not even necessarily committing to the death on the point, but committing to take the fight earlier. Losing mirror is bad, you're down 5v6, but you have to make the choices. You don't commit to the fight on point once you give up two ticks and you're down one, because you're not going to be sending... You, they didn't send Pooks back to taxi for mirror. You have to commit the fight earlier, like you talked about, where if they commit too late, they lose the fight, then they're in that snowball chance. But if they fight earlier, lose the fight where there's less ticks on the board, it gives them time to respawn. Alrighty. Four seconds left here, and the gates are going to be open. Still a lot of life in this horizon. Uh, we could be here for a while, put it mildly. Definitely. We can see the, the, the six cap versus six cap game. It's now NRG here on the offense, moving in. Might make a similar rotation they did for the previous offense where they went lower. See them stacking up here on this right corner. Energy going to be going low ground here first. And again, they do this interesting thing where they don't go from low ground directly to the point. They'll go low ground and then swoop up over the high ground. And you know, a more interesting step because I think it exposes you a little bit more in trying to get to high ground. Sam one already they get the boot down onto Saucy. He's out of the fight. It's out man advantage energy. But Atlanta, they just dive on the other side. They isolate stand one. They end up with a two-man advantage. And this actually isn't too bad for Atlanta. But it is very is close on both sides. It, it, with Gator still alive, there still is the possibility. But Smex, he's been an absolute monster. Getting bat that boop early off a of Saucy where he goes lower. Gets the D-Mech now. But even with that, the frags. Gator shield just denying so much damage for Atlanta. Sort of the benefit of having the Ryan in that early ult neutral game is that you just... It, it, it just gives Bird so much value. He can sit there, just free shoot the orbs. And I, that was a great boot play from Smex. It was him that got Saucy off the high ground. It was sort of a set play. But they could not convert. People talk about 
the disadvantage of losing a Zarya early, but losing a Ryan early really just is damaging in terms of being able to control a fight. And now Atlanta, they're going to challenge us directly. Energy goes up the stairs, and there's a welcoming party there. But the boop off there, Gator, even if the Shatter got something, he wasn't going to be there to follow through. It was nice stuff from Pooks to get him away, protect his team. Kevster built up the Graviton mid-fight, and very likely going to be heading into a Graviton for Transcendence trade. Graviton out, Transcendence in. Atlanta going to be withstanding here. But Stan, building up Shatter midway through the fight. Has the opportunity, has the will, puts Hawk down on the floor. Now, Atlanta gonna heal it back up. Saucy, counter grab moving in. They get Mirror on the other side. It's a man advantage now to Atlanta. And they invest Beat later into the fight. I'm not sure if that was super necessary, but it is going to let Atlanta fully finish this out without any casualties. It worked out still, even if it wasn't entirely necessary because Pooks invests his Beat way too late in the fight. He gets it almost as Stand 1 is dying and presses Q as Stand 1 is dying. So now they, there's no beat for NRG, there's no trance, there's no shatter. They're, they're moving into the fight with really a grab and a rally coming up. And it's still not ideal. That's not the ideal scenario while Bird also has the transcendence up. Atlanta ult bank is still just so much stronger. Atlanta in a very, very good position ult-wise here. A minute 50 left on the time bank. NRG, again, they go the same low ground route. But this time Atlanta, right? They drop down on them and they get the pickoff. Kevster out of the fight before he can even grab. And NRG, now they need to get out of there. They can't do that. It's going to be immense follow through at their expense. And the best thing there for Atlanta, Atlanta only had to use the rally. So going to be four ults up for Atlanta, including the combo. For NRG, still not too close to that combo of their own, though they don't necessarily need it because no beat for Ajax right now. They did commit it along with Pooks in that fight previous in the fight, you know, two fights ago. So NRG have resources to win now. They do have a resource they need. But they Hawk's need bomb will be extremely crucial. They need to go to a well that they draw from often here, which is Smex having a play above and beyond the Call of Duty. And I think right now they would love to have Smex eat the grab from Saucy as he's looking to set it up. Atlanta, though, they have no reason to take this fight early. They can just wait for NRG to head over the point because we're just about one fight territory now. I mean, the longer this rotation the fight takes, then we're definitely getting to one right here. Right? Well, Shatter connecting from Gator, puts two on the ground to the back. Mirror in a whole heap of trouble. Transcendence is going to come out, but the bomb there in the back from Hawk, well set up, takes down two. Not going to be able to sustain through that. The only upside here from NRG is that they are falling so quickly here that they might get one more chance, but it's not going to be a chance that has very good position at all. And Atlanta still might be able to stop them from touching point. It's definitely not, it's going to be close. It's going to be very, very close. Sugar Free has the rally, but considering NRG made it to get in there, remove almost every ult from Atlanta. Stand one has the Shatter Pooks close to the beat. Th there is a chance to touch here, but they need to go and they can't get stopped. Oh, they're moving on in. Atlanta, holding on the point. Pooks staying in there and already smacks down. Had to get on the point aggressively just to get over time and progress. Ends up paying the price for it. NRG gonna have to try and fight this back. Five on six, stand one. Lying the share on the sugar free, but not much there to actually fall through. Beat gonna be invested in NRG, just hoping that something sticks here. And the thing that sticks might be the crowd ton from Saucy in the other end. Gonna cause Poops to fall. And NRG, I mean, keeping in here surprisingly long, but they're just bleeding players at this point. They couldn't wait for a good engage. And Atlanta now just grinding them down. And this is going to set the stage for Atlanta to have a very easy first point take. Six minutes to get 33%. Needless to say, that would be one of the most ridiculous holds of all time if NRG was somehow able to make that work. I mean, but the fight, the series is over. The series is over now. They it didn't is. get, They didn't get the tag. I mean, even if they hold, it's a, t it's a draw. So that means Atlanta have won the series. Obviously, map score is still important. I I, th I think energy could potentially still move down on seeding. I'm not I'm not remembering all the I'm not remembering all the map score off the top of my head. So energy could still move in seeding. I'm I just don't remember for sure. So map score still going to be matter here, but the series is definitely over. Atlanta have gotten it. And when we look at that final recontest for NRG, it's really just the fact that they have to touch point aggressively. They need to stop. And Smexy does the gets the bubble, gets the orb, touches the point, allowing energy to touch, but he dies. And you're down one when the fight begins. Atlanta just slowly but surely win the fight off of that. So Atlanta 
obviously in a very good spot here. I mean, series win aside, you have to think that they're going to be looking for the clean map win in overall 4-0 here. And meanwhile, you look at NRG, and it just... It's been a bit difficult for them. I'd say that right now they've been getting outclassed in the 3-3 matchup pretty heavily in terms of Atlanta just getting better engages reliably. The best look for NRG so far, I think, actually has been when they've been on the Sombra. Sombra's definitely when they've looked their strongest. They're, they're still putting up okay performances in the 3-3 lineup, but Atlanta is looking a lot better. See NRG holding the high ground. Atlanta's six minutes here for the first. They'll be rotating lower. I wouldn't be surprised at all to see this this fake out coming again. See them line up in the corner. They're waiting for NRG to drop. They're they're baiting. They're baiting, and they know. And they, they will finally drop. drop. They so rotation. they're gonna move in. Stand one thought he saw the opportunity. Atlanta able to back out. They'll get a super good counter engage off it. But Saucy charged up here. So is Kemster. Uh, War of the Zarya's going on here, and now we'll see what Atlanta wants to do. Do they challenge here through ground? Do they rotate around? I like this. They're gonna go for the long rotation around, but this is gonna get them to point. They're on point. Stand one close to that shot already, getting all that swing damage. Stand one very low. He's just gone. He's immediately eliminated. And here's the thing. Energy doesn't have the time to actually sit and poke from top. They had to go down the point. It puts Stand one in a really rough spot. Atlanta, just one pick off after the other there. And that's the downside of being in the situation late in an assault map where you have to defend a mere 33% because it changes how you would normally play that defense. So that is the series done. It was already concluded before, but the 3-0 for Atlanta. Pretty decisive series when there's still going to be one more map left. And Atlanta, they're 3-3. It's, it's looking, it reminds me almost of old Atlanta from last season. Not quite as aggressive, not quite as messy, a little bit more controlled, but still very strong. Yeah. I mean, I'd say the difference is that Atlanta looked Mayhem Academy-esque last season where they were just powering through people like not just winning not just a normal 4-0 but a 4-0 with an exclamation mark right where they were probably in a word devastating atlanta now this season after bird i would classify them more as solid it does mean that they can compete with just about any team here but they're not the you know just completely obliterating people the way they used to but certainly they're playing at a high enough high enough level here to decisively beat nrg and you know they've shown it here through three maps and you know, energy obviously going to be looking to end things out at least on a one-map win on as we go to Escort. But energy overall, just the more practice team from what we can tell. Do you mean Atlanta's EP? Do you mean Atlanta's the more practice team? I do mean team? Atlanta's the more practice team. I don't know why I said <laughs> It's a long day. We're, we're it, everyone has to understand. You know, you're looking at us. We're in our cameras here, our duo cam setup, rather than our traditional studio cam that we're yep. do. Is that we've uh, we've had a long day from the the turnaround from uh, KR and also there's a uh, storms happening around here so I couldn't get up there tonight so that's why we're in the duo chem setup we're so so close but so far away yeah as we do the cast tonight definitely uh, fighting a little fatigue I'd say here but you know we wouldn't have it any other way covering both Korea and uh, NA it's been fun uh, it's definitely added a little bit of perspective too between the different strategy and nuances between the region so and i think what's interesting to talk about is also when we look at energy versus atlanta is the arc of these teams throughout the season atlanta coming in from an extremely strong previous season uh start out very underwhelming and inconsistent at times you know they're not looking great for a bit then they get bird and they're looking back to top form again or at least very very good form and nrg who we thought looked very consistent early on the season have struggled and middled a bit as we moved on. They haven't looked top tier again. They've looked re very middle of the pack, which is, I think, the most NRG contenders uh, thing possible because they've always looked good enough to make playoffs, but not quite good enough to make a deep run. Yeah, I mean, that's been the classic NRG. I mean, NRG hasn't been uh, that bad of a team in terms of getting talent up in the Overwatch League where, you know, I kind of see NRG as almost a uprising academy level team in the sense that, you know, as you mentioned, there there's never been a team that has been so good that they've been at the top of contenders, but they've a team that's been very good at developing talent and getting them in the Overwatch League. And, you know, for NRG, that's still good enough. I mean, the goal here in the end for teams is getting players in to OWL. It's not so much winning at all, though that is pretty nice for the players involved. Yeah, well, I think that is definitely going to be a different motto for Uprising Academy uh, since they are obviously relegated after this season. Yeah, and... Well, they can fight their way back. Uh, I'll praise the Academy. It's interesting what happened to them, and, you know, not entirely the time to get fully into it. But if any org can bounce back, it's definitely Boston, especially when it comes to scouting talent. Uh, I think that much has been proven. So 
So Lancer running the 3-3 with Gator on the Ryan, taking this very fast forward hold here on Gibraltar. You see the poke from energy, a lot of pressure on the Gator. Oh, Gator uh, in hot retreat here. NRG just uh, moving on forward. Atlanta giving them plenty of space. But they might hold here for a long time. We've seen teams do this on occasion. It's not the most popular of Gibraltar strategies. But you can just hold here and car wash. But not if Sugar Free dies early. <laughs> NRG gets the very early pickoff on that. Expects they to be giving up his mech. But it's a lot of pressure moving in. Atlanta can invest the transcendence here to try and turn it back. Fighting NRG tooth and nail here, so every team heavily investing. Kepster getting way more from his grab. I mean, Kepster gets a lot of value from the grab, but they still get the transcendence out of Byram. So energy will win this fight. It takes them some time, but Atlanta have the weak contest. They have rally and combo, which they probably won't even need. They could really just only use Saucy's grab, and it would still be great. So the car wash fight, despite Atlanta losing that, they're moving back in for this recontest with overall better ults. Atlanta going to be casually sauntering back out here. And you see Saucy with the grab, Hawk with the self-destruct, and already Hawk off the poke damage from the team, able to find the early pick on the Byram. Atlanta, I'm not sure there's going to be any breaks to this. They're just going to continue to move out, but now they're going to back out. They don't want to go fully out, and I think they're just going to get head back to the payload. Wait Byram was so isolated there, ZP. He was on the blue box, you know, with that little crate with the blue harp over it is to see Gator oh. invest the shatter catch two yeah it works out uh, put some X on the ground put mirror on the ground and a crime of opportunity there and Gator was the culprit works out that is Atlanta I think they're gonna be coming back to the spawn camp here as well bird is dead but actually with bird dead they probably won't be they'll be backing up here they need to go grab bird as energy coming back out taking some time to build these ults Atlanta have been getting especially from the shatter from Gator they're gonna be built up with another trance already NRG getting a decent amount of ults are about to be back online, but Atlanta well prepared to deal with it. Only about a minute 30 left, so NRG only really two decent attempts left here. to try to go high ground, a little bit of disruption, moving in from Smex, but Smex gets punished for it. It's not just to knock you off high ground and get away. He ends up giving his life for it, and that makes the rest of this a lot dicier for NRG. They're probably just gonna have to wait for Smex. The blue box has been NRG's worst enemy so far in this first push. They lose Byram, who's isolated there, then they lose Smex. As you see, Atlanta trying to move to the back line, trying to catch anyone from NRG. Well, they're looking for it right now. That much is for sure. Graviton giving be invested here. So is the beat. Every team having the beat, but Smex with the bomb! Getting more. Atlanta not protected as much from the beat as they would have liked. And off of Smex being able to make the opportunity set up by Kevster. They're in a very good spot now to get point A. That, I don't think there's any recontest possible for Atlanta. They're definitely going to give it up, especially with Hawk going down. Atlanta beat themselves in that defense. They There was no reason at all to commit to the fight on the high ground in that position. You're in an objectively worse position. As you see, NRG rush forward, catch these spawns, force Atlanta to continue to stagger. That was never really a scenario you should ever take a fight in. Is where you rush from server room onto the high ground and look to sniper grab. Well, the other thing, too, for Atlanta is that why do you feel under pressure? Like, you're still in a really good spot. You can drag things out and burn clock as energy moves forward and in. Regardless, now we are on point B. If Atlanta was able to take this first fight, and, well, we got pause. And then we have the pause. As Gator and Mirror, you see them falling lower in that pause screen. So very interesting to see how that will work out. I, Gator has been doing some crazy things so far in the series. Well, he'll push past the shield, rotate back around and get the charge in. I wonder if we'll see that happen again. So we're going to be paused now. It's kind of funny, you know, thinking about Ryan Styles as Gator. I would actually argue that Gator, for better or for worse, has been a more reserved Ryan here, where I feel like if you had different gears on Reinhardt, uh, all very valuable depending on the situation, I would argue that last season he was uh, shifted into bumper, and now he's, uh, you know, down throttled that down into mono, where he's gone from, you know, crazy aggression and flanks more than you could think, and he's gone more to, I just want to be solid and reliable, at all points and he'll make consistently good plays. You see, he does catch Mirror who pops the rally. Gets focused down there. Gator hiding there in that lower door. They're putting so much pressure right now into stand one. Gator doesn't drop the shadow there. Kevster gonna fall. And Atlanta getting the better of this fight and that's so important here in Gibraltar, especially for point B where probably one of the most momentum driven points in the entire game. The defense have such a strong hold here on these initial chokes if you can stop that momentum, if you can stop that offensive momentum from first. 
because now Atlanta can control the high ground. They can watch the rotations for NRG. They can drop down. They can snipe ults. A lot of options open up for defense. Meanwhile, for NRG, again, uh, they're sticking with the 3 3. Kevster, of course, has been building grabs pretty quickly in the setup. And they're going to go for an interesting approach where they're going to stay on the high ground, go through the side room. And Atlanta just going to back out the ship and go, well, you know, at some point you have to commit someone to the payload. And that's what we're going to wait for. And in fact, Atlanta, they shift sides here. Atlanta looking more like the offense, NRG like the defense, as they've pushed NRG a bit away. Ground time can be invested here early. Transcendence out just in time to save. Bomb from Hawk, not going to get a whole lot. Gator pushed back, about to build Shatter up mid-fight. Self-destruct from Smacks right in the middle of it all. Gator under heavy pressure, taken down on all sides. And NRG getting more off the rotational play. Energy getting a lot more off the rotational play. Off the Shatter from stand one, setting up Smex's bomb. So, but Atlanta will have another recontest. They're going to have the recontest with the rally, with the Shatter. The beat will come up as well. And when we look at this, I, I think... When I watch these teams, Gator Shatter will be the turning point, the linchpin for Atlanta, since they're relatively equal across the old game. And look for Sugarfee that maybe try and set up, but they're already down Lucio. NRG gets a much better early engage. Gator does drop the shot midway through, got stand on the ground. It's part of why they're able to even up here. They're poked down, but they're starting to heal back up. They've weathered a good deal of the storm, but Sugarfree down! Byram! Able to catch him with a fistful of orbs! And stand one with the Shatter on the other side. That should be the clincher for NRG as they move forward to take point B, but Atlanta's still fighting. They have four on the point, and this is still, with stand one down, Atlanta could potentially fight this back. I, this is last fight. It, it, now the fight has, drag, has dragged on so long that it's last fight. You see Saucy decides to recommit with Ajax's beat to get the grab off. They're able to pick up Mirror, who rolls back into the fight. Smex bombs, getting demecked. Atlanta, they're holding the point very aggressively still. Not much in the bank for NRG. I'm predicting this is an Atlanta hold. Yeah, I think at this point, NRG had their chance. The last pick off there, hurting them perhaps a bit too severely. Kevster, though, about to have yet another Graviton up. Spexo gives his life early. Give it to Kevster here to land this. Bird still has Transcendence, though, so it might not be defining regardless. Bird transcends in. Shatter in from Gator to the other side. That's it. Fight's over. Atlanta going to be holding off NRG here on point B. I really liked NRG's initial engage to open up that extremely long fight where they drop off the high ground, they rally in with stand one to catch Ajax. But losing those picks, Saucy coming in with the grab, I just couldn't win the long game. Had to have a little bit more decisive an engagement. So, gonna be swapping sides here. Not impossible that NRG could hold here on Gibraltar again. I think Gibraltar, we've said a lot, I think it still bears repeating just because I do think the map is quite good at this, is that NRG, in terms of where teams hold and where teams bring things to, probably the most variable map in the game, I would say. In the sense that I think it's very possible to hold at any point with a reasonable shot, just as it's possible to speed run through. So the idea that NRG could come back in here and get a first point hold, or even just get a counter good hold on point B, not insane, but they're going to have to step things up more so from where they've been at, because Atlanta, on the whole, this entire series has been out playing them. So Atlanta going to be rolling out onto their offense. They have a clear win condition. I mean, they stopped them at second. Not even second cap for NRG. So we know how far we'll be going. NRG obviously looking to take the map still. The series is over. But map score. Still always nice to have. As we move out, NRG on the defense. NRG looks like they'll be running stand one on the Winston here. You just try to utilize that mobility. Have him contest the card early. Build that primal. And it definitely can work on the defense. I think the issue is for NRG is that they're going to have to be even more decisive and just overall clean with their gameplay than what we've seen to make this work. And is Bird... Tr no way. Is he going to be running out of that? I feel like that's why... Yeah, okay. Swapping. Uh, it would have been ridiculous to say the least. See Hawk and Smex are sort of having a Diva War up on the high ground trying to remove him. Trying to get Smex out. So they cannot drop onto Atlanta's back line. And we normally see the Winston on the low ground contesting, but it was actually on the high ground first. I mean, it's up to stand one now to build Primal. Atlanta is trying to speed run the payload. Everyone's on it. NRG has to do something to make Atlanta blink because you can't give up this much space for free when you don't have very far for the opposing team to go. You see stand one dropping down, taking the bubble. Gonna jump back onto the high ground. And as Bird oh. gets the snipe, bye-bye Mirror. 
Bird does what good flex supports do. They get random pickoffs, crimes of opportunity to put a team ahead. Six on five now. And this is now going to be very, very hard for NRG to even consider bringing this back. And Bird's not done yet. He's looking for his counterpart, the Zen on the other side. Zen v Zen taking a lot of Byram's attention here. Meanwhile, Atlanta just putting on more and more pressure onto the point. What has been an increasingly winning fight. Bird with another. Bird getting these frags. And there's also the commit from Byron. Byron decided to use Trance here. As soon as you can say in, there's the Shatter from Gator putting everyone on the ground. There's the cleanup. Even with the Primal, the fight is done now. There's just no damage on the field without Kemster. Bird, I think, has been, I you know, I don't think there's been a more consistent Zen in the NA contenders, and tr besides maybe Alarm, that is or not Or Lastro. I think Lastro has also been. Yeah. But I think Lastro has spent a lot of time on Ana. You yeah. know, I'm talking about getting those early pick offs with right clicks. So yeah, I, I, feel I, I, like, I feel Bird, like there's more time for Ana for Lastro. Bird has been remarkably consistent, and I mean, it's very clearly a huge difference maker in how well Atlanta has been playing here today and also in the last few series. So NRG. Starting to run out of time here. Ajax in the back, about to have beat. Here opens up with the rally here, and off the rally engage, you're able to isolate down Sugar Free. Atlanta, I'm just gonna roll over here and say, you know what, fine, take the team fight. We'll come back stronger. Atlanta can be very happy with that engage. I mean, the rally was used, Kempster used his grab. They've saved every other ult. This next fight is looking great for Atlanta. They can just drop to the cart. They, they don't have to be afraid. They don't have to be sparing with their support ults either, because they know there is no grab. They just really want to set up the combo. Atlanta going to be heading in from the left-hand side. NRG waiting for the drop-down opportunity. Smex in the back is a decent set for a bomb. Graviton already be going to be out here. Smex lays in the bomb right to the middle. Takes down two. It's a bloody team fight on both sides. Atlanta perhaps a little bit further ahead. Still could swing either way. Sugar free, though. Able to get one on the back side just as Smex does the same. Atlanta, though, has been pushing the payload. All the while, getting good progress. Sugar Free with the rally. Smex gonna fall. And Atlanta looking like the victors here off of that. Sugar Free continues to just swing the mace directly in the NRG. And you see the Shatter Trader for both teams a little bit better here for Gator. Ajax getting that pick off. And this is just cleanup for Atlanta. And as we say this, ZP, as, as we see, as we talk about, this is potentially Ajax's final game. And we don't think that it's for Atlanta at least. And we don't think it was a huge difference. I think Atlanta, Ajax still performed well. And so just as uh, and I think for good memories, Ajax died with beat there and that engage. Yeah, he did. Uh, he died with beat. Yeah, I saw that and I knew you were about to. Lead I was, was like, going to say. I'm just going to let you do your lead into that. And there it is. And, and there it is. Is what I have to say. Is uh, I will say this is that those unlucky. memories aside, Ajax has been a very valued part of this Atlanta team. I think more often than not, he's played well. You know, certainly was a key part of Atlanta doing well in the last season. I think, to a degree, people have been unnecessarily harsh on Ajax just because when you have a few prolific moments where things don't go well, that kind of sears itself into the public memory. But, you know, if this is Ajax's last moment with Atlanta, you know, it's good that he's gone out on a win. And, you know, really best wishes to him in the future. I, I think uh, he's a player that if he stays with it, you know, he will be able to grind it out and still have good things heading to him. But I guess now we're entering the era of Funny Astro for Atlanta. And, you know, we'll see where it goes. Atlanta overall, though, much different team, much more solid in the latter half of the regular season here with Bird being in. And they're definitely a dark horse to get to the Atlantic showdown later in the year, I would say. I think Atlanta are looking not, not quite as dominant as they were last season, but they're looking more refined, if anything. They're, they're not looking that extreme unchanged aggression. They've added a lot of reserved play to their toolkit, some more, cle some more surgical playbooks, uh, you know, some set plays. So I, I like Atlanta's look right now. NRG uh, having a rough series. I, it was close at times, but definitely not their best performance by any means. I think for NRG, they need to reflect on what they were good at here and what they were struggling at. And I mean, their 3-3 against a lot of teams is enough, but I think the most promising thing we saw from them was a somber play. If they can just rally around that and take advantage of the fact that not every team is going to be able to run a good Ana to counter it, where you know certainly Atlanta wasn't able to, you know, I think there's something to build on there for NRG. And, you know, one other thing I have to say here, too, for Atlanta. While we're doing predictions, uh, I'm going to run off the credibility that I built from predicting Mayhem beating Fusion the other day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here's my prediction here for the third place match, the final spot in the Atlantic Showdown. I think it's going to be Atlanta versus Fusion University. I think Mayhem's going to take it in one group, and I think MB is going to take it in this group. 
but then it's going to come down to a Season 3 Finals rematch, is uh, what I believe. We'll see if that ends up being the case. But guys, we've only been through three matches of Overwatch here today. Still got one more left to go. So join us here, and in a few minutes, we'll be getting that underway.